our thoughts could make us sick. So if it's possible that our thoughts could make us sick, is it possible that our thoughts could make us well? The answer is absolutely yes. Most people spend 70% of their life living in survival and living in stress, so they're, they're always anticipating the worst case scenario based on a past experience, and they're literally, out of the infinite potentials in the quantum field, they're selecting the worst possible outcome, and they're beginning to emotionally embrace it with fear, and they're conditioning their body into a state of fear. Those problems are circuits of memories in the brain, so what does that mean? The familiar past will sooner or later be predictable future. Well, every time they recall the event, they're producing the same chemistry in their brain and body as if the event is occurring. Firing and wiring the same circuits, your body is the unconscious mind. It doesn't know the difference between the experience that's creating the emotion and the emotion that you're creating by thought alone. So the body's believing. It's living in the same past experience 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And for the most part, you're gonna keep creating the same life. So when it comes time to change, the re redundancy of that cycle becomes a subconscious program. So, so then how do you begin to make those changes? Well, you have to get beyond the analytical mind because what separates the conscious mind from the subconscious mind is the analytical mind. And that's where meditation comes in because you can teach people through practice how to change their brainwaves, slow them down, and when they do that properly, they do enter the operating system where they can begin to make some really important changes. The hardest part about change is not making the same choice as you did the day before, period. And the moment you decide to make a different choice, get ready because it's going to feel uncomfortable. And I always say the best way to predict your future is to create it. And what thoughts do you want to fire and wire in your brain? What behaviors do you want to demonstrate in one day? The act of rehearsing them mentally, closing your eyes, and rehearsing the action. Let's sit down, let's close our eyes. Let's disconnect from your outer environment. So if you're seeing less things, there's less stimulation going to your brain. If you're playing soft music or you have earplugs in, less sensory information coming to your brain, so you're disconnecting from your environment. And then I think the, the hardest part is to teach our body emotionally what the future will feel like ahead of the actual experience. The moment you start feeling abundant and worthy, you are generating wealth. The moment you're empowered and feel it, you're beginning to step towards your success. The moment you start feeling whole, your healing begins. And when you love yourself and you love all of life, you'll create an equal. And now you're causing an effect. The brain does not know the difference between what you're imaging and what you're experiencing. So then you begin to install the neurological hardware in your brain to look like the event has already occurred. Now, your brain is no longer a record of the past. Now it's a map to the future. When you switch that around, you become a creator of your world and you start saying, my thinking and my feeling is changing an outcome in my life. And now, that's a whole different game and we start believing more that we're creators of reality. We've done the research on this. We measured 7,500 different gene expressions in a group of people that came to an advanced event for four days. And we had them doing a seated meditation, a walking meditation, a laying down meditation, a standing meditation. And at the end of four days, just four days, the common eight genes that were upregulated, two genes to suppress cancer cells and tumor growth, two genes for neurogenesis, the growth of new neurons in response to novel experiences and learning, the gene that signals stem cells to go to damaged areas and repair them. The gene for oxidative stress was upregulated. We started seeing all these genes that are very, very healthy to cause the body to flourish. Imagine if people were doing that for three months. We also measured telomeres, the little uh, shoestrings on the end of DNA that tell us our biological age. We asked people to do the work, meditation, five out of seven days for 60 days measure their telomeres to determine their biological age. 60 days later, 74% of the people lengthen their telomeres. 40% significant change. 20% a very remarkable change. That means that they got a little bit of their life back. If it lengthened by 10%, they got 10% of their life back. Knowledge is power, but knowledge about yourself is self-empowerment. And that they begin to use the kind of the power that we all have access to. And 
there's more peace, there's more wholeness, there's more connection, that we support and love each other, we serve better, uh, and, and I think that we have to start, uh, for the most part, if everybody's working on themselves, uh, I think the world will be a better place. And so.